New camera alert, what the heck is this? So if you aren't familiar with what this is, it's pretty new and it's going to be something that's coming out. There is no release date for it, but it is Lytro. Do you remember Lytro? Well, maybe not because one of their first products, their first Lytro, which looked like a little chapstick thing, it failed. I mean, they started coming out for like $300, $400, and, you know, just a couple years later, not even more than like two years later, you're get you're finding them on like deal websites, like all this kind of stuff for like $100 for the cheaper one or $150. And it had this light field ray technology thing that not a lot of people understood. At first they thought it was going to be some app, but they decided to come out with a camera and it was literally this big and you just went like this. So there was really no control over it and you had to use a certain system. Well, guess what? Lytro's newest camera that said they've been working on it for seven years is coming out and it's already in testing uh, uh, stages. And it is called the Lytro Illum, and they call it the camera of the future. Well, I don't know how so. So, once again, this works by its light field ray technology, which they only have in their system, but I think Sony's working on something uh, in regards to that, and it'll work in DSLRs. But they wanted to, uh, you know, create some kind of DSLR instead of that little design that really failed for them and it really flopped. So I said they'd make it for uh, seven years, but uh, they said they wanted to try something innovative, something cinematic, something new looking. Well, guess what? First of all, there's no video on this, so put that aside. But this actually design is already out there, but they just looks like they just iPod mini the thing. They just made it smaller. Look at the black magic cinema camera. It's exactly almost the same design, just bigger. So I guess, guess what? Not much change there, so that's not really innovative uh, in itself. It has an eight times, and you can see right here, uh, it's an eight times uh, optical zoom, so it's going to be basically, they say, and it says right here, it's a constant f2 from uh, 30 millimeters to 250 millimeters with a uh, maximum of a 1 4,000th shutter. So you got your hot shoe up top, I'll rifle through some of these things, you have the awesome thing on the side. So there is a lot that this Lytro Illume has that can make it look like a great camera. Uh, once again, it's a built-in lens, it's optical, you know, you you focus originally like there. You have a 4-inch articulated LCD touchscreen, which is something that is just coming into more DSLRs now. So that's a, uh, so that is a futuristic step, but guess what, the Blackmagic Cinema already has something like that, and I'll kind of give you why I'm comparing that to in a second. So, uh, one of the big complaints that I'm reading from a lot of these test websites where a lot of people are going out and testing this thing is that in low light, this sucks balls. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. They're saying when they touch a thousand ISO, mind you, this isn't video, this is photography. So, you're going to need a ton of light when you're using this, up to only a thousand ISO it fails in low light. So that's something you gotta keep in mind. So I'm gonna throw you the price tag, I'm gonna give you a couple more features that this thing has. So here's more of a top view. So this price tag, uh, so let's see, I think the first original Lytro came out, uh, I think it was $399.99, could have been 500 or something, because it was new and there was a lot of hype for it, and once again, it didn't do so well. Well, they decided to say, after seven years, this is 1500 US dollars. So your first product flopped completely and you throw a $1,500 price tag on this. It doesn't make sense to me. That's absolutely mind blowing. So keep that in mind as well. So this is the future uh, 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 of photography. So uh, one of the big things they integrate and I think, is it this button? I'm not sure if it's this button or not. But one of the big things that they're saying is that they have a Lytro button. So you're not shooting for the, they say, uh, you know, I was reading a button. You're not shooting for, like, composition, all that kind of stuff. And uh, rule of thirds, you're shooting for focus. You're shooting for, you know, the thing I get from this, the light field technology, it's basically in the dumbest form without technology and on separate servers that you need room sizes for. It's focus stacking. Meaning when you take a photo, uh, and this is what I should have explained, in the original Lytro, say you uh, had, you know, say here's one subject and here's another subject. If you focused on this one, you could actually, in their editing software, change the focus to this one. So we'll leave this one blurry. So that's what this is. And that's what focus stacking is, is taking photos that F2, uh, F2.8, F3.2, F4, blah, 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 blah. So that way you can change or, you know, shift the focus later on in post. And that's exactly what this is. It's just a fancy way of saying it to me, um, in my opinion. So they do have a specific Lytro button effect, which instead of it just looking through normal view, you press the button in and you see as the Lytro sheet, uh, as the Lytro sees. So you can see all the dots and ranges that it has in regards to how you can change, um, 
the focus later on in post. But uh, there's one huge thing, there's one huge flaw, and it's a 53 megabyte uh, photo uh, after you take it. So I'm not sure the megapixels and all that uh, and everything because it's the light ray whatever field thing. But it's a 53 mega, uh, megabyte right whatever photo. So you need to use, uh, once again, you can't use any other Photoshop, Lightroom, GIMP, whatever you use. You have to use uh, Lightro's desktop editing software, which they say really does look like Lightroom. But once again... The photos, and this is the huge flaws, there's a lot of bugs in it and it keeps crashing. Same thing as what their other one did. It takes five seconds to open. Okay, that's really annoying. But up to 30 seconds to a minute to import. Holy hell, if you have a slower computer with not a lot of RAM, your video card sucks and everything like that, um, this is going to suck for you because you could never use this. So this is the Lightro Alum. Um, I mean, we were hearing about it. There wasn't a ton of stuff out. You know, a couple things leaked here and there. But there's this is just so uninteresting to me. Um, only because I was interested so much when they first came with the Lightro. Uh, I was able to use it for a little bit. And then it just failed. It flopped. It was just not good. The form factor wasn't good. And then this is supposed to be better. And then you could charge this much more. $1,500 more for something that's not proven and you already failed. It's not a good business plan to me. But who knows? It could be something to you. I don't like this focus. You can do it yourself for under $300 when you buy a DSLR. You can focus stack yourself. So, And it's coming in phones now. So whatever. Lightro Loom, it's coming out. $1,500. What do you think? Is this something that you're really interested in? Or is it something like the first one where you're like, eh, well, no. Nope. Eric Ross, the guy with the eye. I didn't know I was going to make a video about this today, but uh, I see a lot of hype for it. So I wanted to tackle it and cover it. So let's talk it out down in the comments. Have a good one, everyone. Boom.